one thing we need to understand about Magic Bevel is that if you have these settings and you're zoomed in, making a line here will create the same distance on the points as if you take this guy, zoom out, and do the same thing. Well, actually, I guess that's not quite true, as you can see, but um, it does make a difference. Your zoom level does make a difference, so just be aware of that. If uh, the distance between the lines don't match, well, just be aware on just be aware of that that your zoom level affects the the distance of uh, those points. Okay, let's start. Uh, we'll start with it, creating a two-point polychain and uh, rendering that in the layout. So um, hit the plus key and click here and press P. I'll create a polygon right here. Okay, so let's just move that right, right there. And now we're going to go to Magic Bevel and use these settings right here. Uh, because I want that kind of distance between the points. So I set that to 20. So I just start to draw. Now you can see that it lags behind, right? But uh, one thing is to be aware of is that that doesn't really matter too much. Because the line will follow the arrow anyway. So just focus on your arrow and not, and not that line. This is also because of my video recorder. There we go. What I can do now, I can use edit path, but you can see that that looks like a mess. So I'm just going to escape magic bevel altogether and just tweak this stuff manually. How much do I want to tweak this? Well, not too much. So I'm just going to do this quite roughly to save time. Um, I guess it wasn't that roughly after all. Uh, but all right, so what we got here is uh, something that looks all right. And well, I can take these guys and I can, now I can use something called real time smooth from Tama and uh, just pump that up a bit to make this look nicer, look better. Um, move this a bit down. Eh, starting with my Photoshop shortcuts here. Okay, um, I guess I could add one more here if I, so I can say uh, E here, I guess, and go like that. Yeah. Could do that here as well. Let's move that over here and press E and move this one out here. Okay, and it looks great. Right. Now we can render it. Um, so you see that this does take time. I mean, if you if it's possible for you to get the illustrator file, please do that because you know this is time consuming. 
Anyway, so we'll just save that one and jump to send that object to layout. And in layout, um, go to the camera, move it up, and slide it like that. Heading zero, pitch 90. Move it up again in the Y, and uh, now we'll do a render, and it looks good, but uh, we can do more. All we can do here is that we can, let's see, yeah, we can set a minus here of 0 0.005 meters, and now render. You'll see that, hey, it has a thickness, right? Looks good. What you'll notice though is that you'll get some, you know, there, there's no smoothing here, but uh, that's just something that you will be, well, have to deal with. The good thing is, well, you do save quite a lot of polygons, and also you can surface this, for example, uh, with. Uh, specularity glossiness and not sure about texturing but anyway I'm not sure why you would want that maybe you could uh, uh, why not just try it right just hope it doesn't crash um, let's see what it does it's too Let's a little bit of contrast here. <laughs> actually, it does work. So actually, you can can add a texture to it as well. As you can see, it it looks very good. It's not quite the shape that we want though. But uh, for something being in the distance, this might be a nice good way to do it. I guess what you could also do let's see take these guys here copy and paste and um, move this one out here go back render and you can see that you got kind of like a thickness here now, right? So maybe you want to do that in order to, to create a thickness on it. 